हरे कृष्णा चंद्रमौली स्वामी महाराज धनवत प्रणाम और ग्लोरिस टू शीला प्रभुपाद थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर गिविंग अस योर टाइम वैल्यूबल टाइम एंड एसोसिएशन एसोसिएशन दिस मॉर्निंग एंड एनलाइटनिंग अस ऑन द टॉपिक ऑफ श्रीमद् भागवतम विदाउट फर्दर एडियो आई वुड लाइक टू रिक्वेस्ट यू टू प्लीज टेक ओवर फ्रॉम हियर हरे कृष्णा थैंक यू महोदय श्री कृष्णा ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय श्रीमद् भागवतम 6 18 27 28 मानोजया Dixonai. Thinking in this way, with a desire for a son to kill Indra, Diti began constantly acting to satisfy Kishapa by her pleasing behavior. O king, Diti always carried out Kishapa's orders very faithfully, as he desired with service, love, humility, and control. With words spoken very sweetly to satisfy her husband, and with smiles and glances at him, Diti attracted his mind and brought it under her control. Purpur, when a woman wants to endear herself to her husband and make him very faithful, she must try to please him in all respects. When her husband is pleased with his wife, the wife can receive all necessities, ornaments, and full satisfaction for her senses. Herein, this is indicated by the behavior of Diti. When the Gyan Chimbaranda Shia Gyanal Dena Salatwini, Taksun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Maha, Ama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Tristaya Dita, Shumakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Mamani, Namaste Sarah Swati Goyo Gaudavani Pacharya Mamani Pusa Sunya Vahari, ृष्णी So why is why is Diti angry at Indra? Because he arranged for the killing of her two sons, which were her own Yaksha and her own Tarsi too. Two sisters, Diti and Aditi. Aditi is the mother of the demigods, and Diti is the mother of the Asuras. The Asuras are a class of people also who live on certain planets and also take birth in different places according to the karmic situation in that place. So when the karma goes down to the lower modes of passion and ignorance, then children born are born with really horrific characters. <laughs> Sometimes very demonic, also. So Diti, although they were demons, still they were her sons, and she's angry that she that uh, Indra arranged for the Lord to kill her two sons. And now she wants to take revenge. <laughs> so here now we see how she's plotting her program. 
And this is a very interesting. In the next chapter also, you also see how things develop. Uh, but here we see that um, Prabhupada focuses on the verse itself, that if a woman, especially in this case a wife, wants something, she uses her feminine charm to please her husband, her boyfriend, like that, in order to fulfill her desires. It's a little devious, obviously, because it's motivated by personal desire, but it works, as Prabhupada says here, that if a woman wants to endear herself to her husband, create faithfulness in him, she must please him in all respects. The devotees also could think in that same way that a devotee wife, she should also try to please her husband in all respects not for her, her own personal gain, but to satisfy her husband. And at the same time, then the husband, of course, it's natural, is inclined to fulfill her desires. And within the devotional circles, not like it's mentioned here, but in the devotional circles, then uh, the woman will get much benefit in her spiritual practice because it says that the wife gets 50% of the uh, spiritual credits of her husband automatically just because she is a wife, <laughs> along with her own credits. So she's in a good position to make spiritual advancement. But nowadays we find people think that this is uh, old fashioned. And generally we see that in society women even in devotional society, women don't follow these principles and therefore there's a lot of independence in terms of relationships. And sometimes things break apart because of that. But here, this is the way to... Uh, so I don't really have, a, I'm not the expertise on this particular subject matter <laughs> because I am not in that female body, but the women they know. <laughs> That uh, that uh, <clears throat> uh, this is the way to achieve. So we, everyone in devotional service, should want to achieve spiritual progress, spiritual merits, and get facilities that bring about uh, a chance to make progress in devotional service. So it's the duty of the husband to guide the, the wife in spiritual life. And but sometimes we see that the, the wife is even more spiritually inclined than the husband. This happens a lot. You see in uh, religious events nowadays, when there is a big religious event, the majority of the participants are, are ladies. Men are always in the smaller numbers. Uh, ladies are more inclined to spirituality the devotion, and men are, particularly in this age, and you know, that's the emphasis, not so much in previous ages, but particularly in this age, because men are very much inclined to material progress, and therefore they're always busy trying to improve these areas of life. Well, sometimes the women, they have much time. There was one event in our uh, in Bombay, many years ago, when one of our leading Indianites held the Pondell program, and when it was during a cricket match, <laughs> everyone knows that sometimes we use a little euphemism and we say, "What is the, what is the, uh, the main religion in India?" And the answer is cricket. <laughs> You'll see when the cricket matches and India is in the finals for the championship, you know, the streets are empty. <laughs> People are in the stadiums, they're in the, they're in the, uh, they're on the television sets watching the cricket match becomes. So there was one cricket match and we had, we had a Pondo program right at the same time. And 
the devotee who conducted it mentioned later that there were thousands of people there, but very few men, mostly all women. In fact, not only the majority, but the large majority. So the men were all at the cricket games were watching the television sets. So this is Kali Yuga. <laughs> and uh, it's very laudable and very much wanted to see that the women are more inclined to spirituality. Just like even on our daily Zoom calls, we find there's always more women on the calls than men. <laughs> women make up the large majority of the classes everywhere throughout our ISKCON society. Not always, but in a lot of places. So that that is obviously good in the sense that the women class are, are very much devoted. A woman's heart is more inclined to devotion than a man is in the sense that you know, if she is given the right opportunity to become a great devotee of the Lord. And of course, it's up to her husband or her guardian or someone that is responsible to make sure that the ladies get everything they need to make progress in spiritual life because they're very much inclined to that. Uh, where I am, when I preach, I find I have some disciples. The ladies are there, but the husbands are not there. And sometimes even the husbands are mimical and try to stop their wives from participating in spiritual activities. So this is the climate of Kali Yuga. But here, we're getting a little bit back to the uh, quality of uh, uh, women's nature, women's charm, the charm of a woman that she has all of the ingredients by which she can control a husband. It says that in material life, we sometimes we make, it's not a joke, but it's actually given in a very humorous way, although it has a, an element of truth. It says that a woman, a man chases after a woman until she catches him. A man chases after a woman until she catches him. So this is how it goes because women know how to attract the attention of men in such a way that she is the active participant in the relationship, but he apparently is the one that's pursuing it. So um, women are very powerful. It says that the power of a woman, just like Gandhari, we have the history of great women in our, in our Vedic culture. Gandhari was so powerful that um, she was, her husband, Vidarasta, was blind from birth. In order not to become superior to her husband on the physical level, she voluntarily wrapped cloth over her eyes so she would not be in a better position than her husband. And still, she carried out her services. Too. She was a perfect mother. She had daughter Vidarasta and Gadari had. 100 sons. She was a perfect wife, a uh, perfect devotee. She's glorified. And we have many. Uh, Gandhari was so powerful that when uh, he wanted her son, Deodhana, to be invincible in battle, she told him, You come before me tomorrow without any clothes, you come naked, and I shall glance at you, and your whole body will become like steel. So the other day, he was doing that. So he was walking with no clothes. Krishna came up to him and said, hey, where are you going? I'm going, I'm going to see my mother. No clothes? Here, you should wear a loincloth. So he took the vice of Krishna and put the loincloth on. And then when Gandhari unfolded her eyes, she saw that he was wearing a loincloth covering his hips. And therefore, his whole body became like steel 
except for the, the lower part of his body, the hips. And then when he was fighting against Bhima, Krishna gave him the Krishna gave Bhima the, the clue how to kill the Yodana by hitting him in the hips and breaking his hips. And the Gandhari, she realized that her plan had been frustrated by Krishna. But then she was that powerful. Simply by looking at the body of her son, it became like steel. And he was invincible in battle, practically. Except that Krishna foiled that plan in order for the Pandavas to win the war. So we have many great ladies in the history of the Sita Devi. He was so chaste and faithful, despite being captured by that Rakshasya. Uh, Ravana. Ravana was quite charming. He was also very handsome. And he had many wives. But she didn't succumb. And he threatened her in so many ways, but she remained faithful. Rather, she would rather give up her life than give up her chastity to her husband. And then there is uh, Mandodari. Mandodari was the, uh, well, the chief principal wife of Ravana. She's glorified in the Shastras as being one of the most chaste women in the history of Vedic culture. But the most chaste in all of our all chaste women is Anasuya. We don't hear much about Anasuya. She's mentioned in the Bhagavatam. But she also, there's a whole section in the, in, that is considered an extension of the Ramayana where Anasuya is giving instructions to Sita, the wife of Ram, how to become the perfect wife, perfect, uh, yeah, perfect wife. So Anasuya is considered to be superior to all of the ladies as being the most chaste of all chaste. You can read about her past times in the fourth chapter of Srimad Bhagavatam. So women are very powerful, extremely powerful. And when a man is married to a very chaste wife, he becomes extremely uh, uh, expert in everything he does. It says that the woman is the better half of the man. And that is not just some statement of glorification, it's actually true. Uh, in married life, that when uh, when a woman is chaste and very faithful and serves her heaven and husband very nicely, satisfies him in all respects, he becomes advanced in Krishna consciousness and he becomes very spiritual and materially very powerful. So the, the women make the difference actually within the world. And we see the opposite when women are you know, taken out of the home and sent into the workplace, exploited by the, the colleagues who are men in different ways, and are used as sex symbols for advertising and in so many different ways. The whole society goes to hell. So when uh, Arjuna was talking to Krishna, and he said that, uh, You know, I can't fight. One of the reasons why he said I'm not going to fight is because if all the men are killed, then the women will have no protectors. And if the women remain loose without protectors, then the society will have varna sankara, unwanted population. And when unwanted population comes within the society, the whole society goes to hell. And Krishna acknowledged what he said, of course, but Krishna still wanted him to fight. And uh, but what Arjun said was 100% in line with spiritual principles or material or the moral qualities. So when uh, when women are very chaste and follow the principles of chastity, um, I know one lady who is a devotee of our one of our devotees in another country. I won't mention any names. She doesn't talk to any other men. She's married to her husband and she keeps very chaste. If she has to talk to other men, it's only out of some emergency or some situation. 
And I noticed that her husband is very powerful spiritually. And so when we see that, we can see that how this, uh, this man-woman relationship works in such a way as when it's followed, when, we follow, when the women follow the Vedic culture, when the men also, they also have to follow, then uh, one becomes very powerfully spiritual and spiritually and can perform many, many wonderful services. So it is a, a feature of the fair sex that she can control her husband in the right way in order for her to make advancement in the spiritual life and for him to also become more and more inclined to serve his wife in a way that she will also benefit spiritually and materially. And of course, it says that uh, a woman requires three things, a man, and that is she requires, when she's looking for a husband, she's looking for one who can give her affection, protection, and material security. So affection obviously is there. Protection against dangers, and of course, material security that the man can provide everything that is needed for livelihood within the family. Now, a husband is looking, is usually the husbands are looking for something else. They're not looking for those three things. I won't go into that right now. But when a woman is very chaste, then the husband's duty, of course, is to provide everything that she needs. And Prabhupada mentions here all necessities, ornaments, full satisfaction of the senses. So Prabhupada Rens mentions in the Bhagavatam that the man should regularly give gifts to his wife, provide her with ornaments, nice clothing, nice food. I had a particular incident where I was in Mayapur with one of my one of my disciples who was married. And uh, his wife wasn't my disciple, but he was. So he had a dream one night. And the dream was that I appeared in the dream and I handed him a sari in the dream. And then he couldn't figure out that dream. And he came to me the next morning. He said, Maharaj, you know, you came into my dream and you gave me this sari. And I was thinking, why is my Guru Maharaj giving me a sari? So later I understood that the sari wasn't for him, it was for his wife. I gave it to him in the dream to give to his wife because he needed to do that. He needed to give some gift to his wife, particularly a sari. So this was a nice little reminder for both of us. And of course, later on, right after that, he bought her a sari. It was a green sorry in the dream anyway. I don't know what color he brought, but that's that's something else. So yeah, so uh, if you want to keep the marriage together, there is there is not just doing your duty, but understanding what is the needs and desires, both spiritually and material, for each of the partners. And if the husband is trying to fulfill the desires of the wife in a proper way, not extraordinary or outside of devotional service, and the wife is doing the same towards the husband, then the husband, then Prabhupada says, then there is no need for taking sannyas. He says that I, that Vihasta Ashram is as good as the Rinas order. So, um, yeah. So, uh, Prabhupada says, in Krishna consciousness or usually in family life. So Bhagavatam gives us a lot of clear and important instructions how to maintain the family, how to develop the family, and how to make the relationships. Because we are always challenged by the Western materialistic society that simply tries to uh, use 
the individual in order to propagate economic development. In other words, to sell more and more products and to get people more and more involved in work, working for material gain. But we should not, we should be aware of that and try to avoid that as much as possible and keep the principles of Vedic culture alive, both within the family and within the, the ashram, of course, also. So these are some things we can think about. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Then work for Nam to you. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you, Maharaj. Very, very short, but very amazing class, Maharaj. I loved it. I love the points you said and uh, and all the points are true, Maharaj. Uh, love your humor, Maharaj, when you say you can't speak on marriage. <laughs> but uh, since we chant, Maharaj, we know, uh, uh, especially I think as a Grasta, we would like to be a Sanyasi, Maharaj. <laughs> Maharaj, you said uh, wife gets 50% of spiritual credit and I was laughing. Wives get 100% of material credit. So <laughs> we are always in a losing position here, Maharaj. I don't know what to add, Maharaj. That was a beautiful class. And I was uh, I was loving the purport that um, Srila Prabhupada has you know, given so simple words that we all can understand these purports. And Maharaj, you gave a very beautiful class. I was thinking about the ornaments. I thought today all the Matajis should be very happy. Ornaments are right there in the purpose. So <laughs> everybody loves the ornaments. And Maharaj, so true about the cricket. Even when uh, when I was very young back in India, Maharaj, cricket is, uh, is a religion over there, Maharaj. You are very, very true, Maharaj. You know, but since uh, thanks to Srila Prabhupada, we... We start chanting and we we realize uh, what life is about. What we will take away from here is uh, not some cricket or some mundane uh, material thing. But, <laughs> the, but the chanting that we will take away for sure. Krishna says, Neha Vikrama Nashosti. We will certainly take our spiritual credits with us. Yeah, and Maharaj, sorry Maharaj. We're trying to make the cricket players Krishna conscious. <laughs> hari bol, hari bol, hari bol. Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. We see that, Maharaj. It's happening too. <laughs> yes, Maharaj. Hundred percent, Maharaj. Mercy of Shila Prabhupada. All, uh, all the world is being attracted to Krishna. That's uh, that's Prabhupada's mercy. Um, and Maharaj, you are right. Very true, Maharaj. Uh, we see Matajis are way more uh, inclined towards Krishna Bhakti. And even today, Maharaj, on the call, there are more Matajis than Prabhu. I, I was actually counting. <laughs> so there are there is a majority of Matajis <laughs> than, uh, than Prabhu's. So Maharaj, you are right. And Maharaj, you know, every time I, I, I listen to Bhagavatam, I am I am being convinced that we get everything from Bhagavatam, even in this material world, Maharaj. Maharaj, you narrated very beautiful story of Duryodhana, our glories to you, you Maharaj, about the Gandhari when when she sees Duryodhana and his body gets of steel. And I'm connected to movies of these days, Maharaj, where, you know, we see this steel man, like all the ideas, Maharaj, is coming from our Shastras. So right. that, that is so beautiful, Maharaj. Uh, today, you know, kids see bodies of steel and, and, and uh, the superheroes flying here and there. And we have our Hanuman who went uh, to save Mother Sita from one way to another way to Lanka, Maharaj, flying, right, Maharaj? <laughs> And we see steel man and iron man. <laughs> and this is all coming from Shastras Maharaj. So beautiful. Yeah. So yeah. beautiful. Everything starts from the spiritual. Everything Maharaj, everything. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to your services Maharaj. Thanks for coming on the call Maharaj. Dear devotees, Maharaj is there for uh, blessings. So please go ahead if anybody has any questions, any comments for Maharaj. Please go ahead. I see Thank Maharaj, you. so many devotees on the call. Uh, I see on the video, uh, Indulekha Mataji. I see Scarlet Mataji. I see Shama Gauri Mataji. I see Shilpesh Prabhuji there. Hare Krishna, all devotees. Maharaj, there is uh, uh, Shiva Kumar Prabhuji who has his hand raised. Hare Krishna, Shiva Kumar Prabhuji. You can please go ahead and unmute yourself. Hari Bol. 
हरे कृष्ण प्रभु दंडावत प्रभु हरे कृष्ण महाराज दंडावत प्रणाम सारे महाराज Which Kumara of Shiva are you? Sorry, Maharaj, I'm not getting your question. <laughs> Raju, Raju speaks. <laughs> Maharaj, Maharaj is is very humorous. Maharaj, Shiv Shiv Kumar Prabhu Ji, so Maharaj is just laughing with you, which is which is a great fortune. When when Maharaj laughs, that's good. <laughs> that's what we like. Maharaj was sure. just uh, laughing. Which Kumara are you from the Shiva? So Shiva Kumar. <laughs> क्षत्रियो Uh, but uh, personally maharaj i find it very difficult to kind of apply kshatriya qualities for some why have the tendency to think that they are uh, orthogonal uh, to uh, devotional life or it's just not coming from my nature so kind of how do i how can i improve uh, to kind of apply kshatriya qualities when it when the situation demands maharaj instead of always looking at the situations internally to see how i can correct uh, internally instead of uh, setting things outside Well, working according to time, place, and circumstances requires the intelligence to understand how to apply the principles and whatever needs to be said. But there is an element that's called satyam priyam, satyam bhuyam, how to speak the truth in a palatable way. So, satyam qualities don't mean that you have to use the passion. That is the inherent in the satria nature, but you can use the still communicate the qualities or the activities from your own perspective. In other words, when truth is spoken palatably, it becomes more easily to understand, more easily to accept, to accept it. So yeah, sometimes we act. impetuously or there appears to be some immediate response to a situation i was just that happened to me this morning immediate response without clearly thinking about how the results would come by that response so these things can happen and it can cause relationships to deteriorate or break down so we have to be very mindful mindful means they're thoughtful that if we see the situation we act accordingly but in a way that that whatever we say or do is done in a gentlemanly way a proper way with respect to the persons involved then that's an art i know one particular Sanyasi in our movement, he can speak very strong, cutting words, but he speaks them so sweetly and very intelligently that unless you listen to it, you can't you can't see that he's actually uh, making a point to undercut something you're doing or or, or acting. In other words, he's cutting away your material attachments, but he's doing it in a very Sweet way. So that's an art. Take some time to practice, and our natures. If you have the shatri in nature, then you have to control that by intelligence. If you're more brahminically inclined, then your nature is in line with being more in a mood of humility and more in the middle mood of trying to serve. Shatri is they're also in the mood of serving, but they're they're very impetuous about getting the job done. They have a tendency to, you might say, be very clear, straightforward, and very strong in their way of doing things. That's the Shatriya nature. We all have a particular nature, so you have to understand your nature. 
I can see just by seeing you, you are not, you don't have a Shatri in nature. Mm -hmm. Just by the way you speak, I can see that. Uh, so, okay. So, yeah, so use your very simple, humble nature, but speak according to time, place, and circumstance. And speak in a pleasing way. Mm -hmm. When we want to get somebody to do something, it's not so much to tell them not to do something, but to tell them what to do. If you usually you tell a child not not to do this because they have to hear what not to do. But when you're dealing with grown-ups, you tell them more. You give the understanding of what is right rather than telling them what is wrong. That's a tactic in communications that has more effect than them putting people down just because they may be doing something wrong. You overshadow the wrong thing by explaining what is the right thing. So these are some things you can think about. But when you're faced with the situation, then you have to depend on Krishna. <laughs> Thank you so much for that. Very Krishna. Very helpful. Thank you. Krishna. Thank you, Shiva Kumar Prabhuji. Thank you for staying with us. Thank you for your beautiful question, actually. Sometimes we are afraid and shy of asking questions. Thank you for coming on the call and asking the beautiful question, actually. So please do join us every day. Uh, thank you, Maharaj. Beautiful answer. Certainly, Maharaj, we can see it anywhere. Uh, sweet words can win, uh, win anybody's heart also. Sometimes some, some harder situations too. So words should be spoken very choosefully and carefully, Maharaj. Which... Uh, which uh, certainly not, not the case of Shiv Kumar Prabhu. He's a very humble devotee, we can see. But which certainly comes uh, when we are near devotees like me, myself, Maharaj. We, we don't understand the real meaning of life. And chanting uh, really is helping Maharaj. Is um, taking us uh, from our lower nature to a higher taste, Maharaj. So true, Maharaj. Words should be chosen very carefully because once they are spoken, they are spoken. <laughs> and then sometimes we regret all of our life, oh, what, what I said in that situation. So thank yeah. you so much. Yeah. Uh, that, that mode of passion comes right and all of a sudden it grabs us and then we're speaking in a very upset or angry way. <laughs> so true, Maharaj. So true. <laughs> Uh, yeah. dear, yes, Maharaj. Dear devotees, if anybody has any more questions or comments, please go ahead. So you can be blessed and answered your question by Maharaj. Otherwise, if nobody has no questions, we can end the call. So Maharaj, I don't think anybody has any questions because it was very simple purport by Srila Prabhupada and then you elaborated it very perfectly so everybody understood I think <laughs> hopefully I just wanted to say thank you it was such a beautiful class it really was I'm very grateful for your class today and for your association and thank you so much for coming to us regularly I truly appreciate it beautiful thank you so much Hare Krishna Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Tiffany, Mataji. Thank you so much, Mataji. So true. Maharaj has a very busy schedule and still Maharaj gives us blessings with his classes. Hare Krishna, Sri Devi, Mataji. Dhanavad for Naam. Please go ahead, Mataji. Thank you, Raj Prabhu. My humble obeisances to you, dear Guru Maharaj. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Guru uh, Maharaj, right in the beginning, almost of the class, you mentioned about how women are so much more inclined to spiritual activities. And now in Kali Yuga especially, come in large numbers. And even Srila Prabhupada writes this in one of the Srimad Bhagavatam purports. But at other times, we read in the scriptures how women are very lusty. They're very materially inclined. They are, uh, you know, materialistic in nature, envious, etc., etc., so how do we uh, reconcile these? Um... That, 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 that last statement applies to the materialistic women. That huh. applies to the devotees. 
when one becomes a devotee, and they develop, they develop devotional qualities. The best, the best, the best devotees are the gopis. Yeah. Thank you, Guru. So that statement has been clarified by Prabhupada. When he makes that distinction, he said that that applies. And Prabhupada did say one time to the general body of devotees, he said, the women in our society are just as good as the men. Because they've taken to devotional service. That is their extraordinary quality. Aribol, very, very, very beautiful question, Mataji, and very, very beautiful answer, Maharaj. Certainly, and that comes, Maharaj, only after chanting and uh, after reading uh, Bhagavad Gita. You know, when we think on the top of our body, because this body is uh, what is Krishna says, Vasam si jirnani yatha vihaya. This is just a cloth on our soul. So then, when and woman distinction is not there, Maharaj. Very beautiful answer, Maharaj. That comes uh, very. Very late, but it does come, Maharaj. Glories to Srila Prabhupada. So, dear yeah. devotees, if, uh, if nobody has any questions, any comments, we will end the class here. Uh, Maharaj, our very dear devotees, uh, Indulika Karuna Mataji is thanking you for the beautiful class, Maharaj. Actually, Indulika Mataji is behind the scenes all the time. All the time, dear devotees, when you see any purports being shown up, and the class is being start and the class is being end. <laughs> it's all our Indulekha Mataji is behind the scenes. So all glories to your services, Indulekha Mataji. So dear devotees, let us pay our obeisances to Maharaj and all the assembled devotees. Vancha Kalapataru Maharaj.